a look at Bill's little FM wireless microphone, plus some nighttime views from the dash cam. Ah, oh, good evening, YouTube. Here with you at uh, 9.37 in the evening. I have this, uh, you probably, you may be able to hear the echo. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that because I've got it broadcasting over the radio. <laughs> uh, you see this, uh, this little control right here? I'm going to put a close-up of that. And also going to put up the uh, ad I do believe that came with this. Um, like I said, you can you can see that's 97.9. That's what I've got my little bench amp set up right now. So anyway, that's uh, working rather well. Um, anyway, here's the ad that uh, I found on eBay. I believe this is the same one, and you can look at it. It's got the uh, strap and everything's exactly the same and you'll see the name of it is a, a mini reverb or whatever it's called and I think that uh, is our problem uh, I'm gonna put uh, a clip of Bill uh, video here where he was describing the problem he was having with this and then we'll come right back if there's a way of opening this up which I doubt without breaking it but if anybody can do it you could I'm gonna give you this I don't remember what I paid for it. It's under 10 bucks probably on eBay. They're called uh, Lavalier uh, Echo or something. I don't like the Echo. So you can turn the Echo off, but you have to shout into this thing in order to get any modulation at all. So I'm going to show you now on the radio. Hang on a minute. You can see it. It's set on 95 megacycles. Okay? Now... The radio here is set on a lot of reflection, but it's on 95 megacycles, take my word for it. Now, there's an echo control here. It's on echo. Listen. One, two, three, four. Okay, you want to turn the echo off, you just slide this control all the way down. One, two, three. But you turn the echo off. And the audio goes off too. Just barely hear it. Listen, I'll blow into it. Put the. See? So, if anybody can fix this thing, maybe you can get a stage of preamplification in here. All right, now you can see, I think Bill is a little confused on what this function here is. He thought it was for the uh, turning the reverb off, but it just actually decreases the volume is all that does. And I think the reverb just stays on all the time. And when you put it up here where it's like this, it, it picks up a lot better. You can even hear me, you know, echoing right now. But like I said, I think that's uh, the, where the confusion is, Bill, I believe. And uh, like I said, that's, uh, that's my opinion on this whole uh, situation on this, uh, you know, because it, <laughs> it is advertised as a reverb microphone. So, you know, it's definitely doing that. And uh, like I said, I just believe that's the uh, problem that you were experiencing. Uh, the gain on this is not real good. The sensitivity, whatever you want to call it, just like you said, unless you hold it up here like this. It does work all right then, but uh, like I said, that echo is there, and uh, reverb, whatever you want to call it. So, anywho, that's what uh, that's what we're finding out here on this, and I think that's uh, I'm not really sure about taking this apart. I don't know that it would do any good if I did take it apart. I mean, you can see there's a line there, a line there, um, line around here. I don't know if that's a separate part. But again, I don't know if there's anything I could do with it. Um, it's probably a little circuit board with a chip, probably is all it is. And, uh, you know, that's probably all there is to that. So, all right, that's that. That's what I found out with that. Now, I didn't do anything today. Uh, let me turn this off. 
You can hear how, how loud I add that up. But I, I can I can agree with uh, Bill on the uh, sensitivity is not very good on it at all. So uh, I don't think that's uh, worth even fooling with. But, uh, you know, that's just my opinion. Um, anyway, I didn't do anything at all today. I uh, it was a bum basically all day. And uh, uh, what I was talking about, uh, I think, well, I can't remember what I was talking with, but I was talking about maybe making a set of knobs. Now, Don over at Restoral Radios has a video where he made uh, uh, a duplicate copy of a knob that he wanted to make. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty pretty good process to do all that. I don't know that I'm, I'm willing to do all that, but uh, I may look into some other ways of doing this. But anyway, uh, as far as uh, making a copy of one of these knobs, this one be obviously the one to make a copy of because it's, uh, it's a full knob, and it's basically the same knob as that. It just doesn't have the same printing on it. But, you know, you could put a make you a label, uh, a white label with printing on it to, uh, to, do, to mimic the uh, printing on this. You know pretty easily I think and that would be your way to go I do believe and uh, basically just put your your stuff on that and uh, that would be all you needed because basically that's the whole you can see 55 and 16 right there that's the whole whole shebang right there so once you got that on there I do believe that uh, you know that's all you'd need is half of it and it basically would you know that there's a there's a line on the uh, case that uh, shows you where you're at on the uh, thing. So I think that would be the way to go. If I do it, that's what I'll probably end up doing. But uh, I haven't decided yet on what I'm going to do like that. But we'll see. Uh, anywho, like I said, I didn't do anything else to it. It's just still sitting here. Uh, this is, I wanted to show this to Bill. I don't know. If, I'm sure he noticed it. But there is a hole in the case. He was talking about lining this uh, speaker up. Uh, a certain way. See this uh, bracket here? There is a hole in the bottom of the case that that lines up with. I'll bring you down here to show you. Uh, you can see that hole right there. That's where there's a screw goes through there and holds that, that uh, speaker in there. And basically that and the uh, one that goes through the circuit board is what holds the whole thing together as far as I can tell. And then you have your knobs in there too, you know, that uh, they come through it a little bit and, you know, so anyway, that's that's pretty much it for that. Uh, I'm going to probably maybe put that together tomorrow. I don't know. We will see about that. Um, I uh, had something else I wanted to ask, add to this. Uh, now I've done for... Oh, yeah. Uh, the other night uh, would have been... Uh, let's see. When I went and got Kylie last night, that's when it was, um, from work, I ran the... Uh, the dash cam on my uh, car and I put it in the night mode and I wanna, I'm going to put up a few clips of that and I'm probably just going to keep on talking you can look at the clips as you want now I did turn, turn the uh, volume down on it because I, I played music during the whole trip because I was playing around with my monster and using a uh, USB flash drive I had put some music on there instead of using my phone to see how that worked it works pretty good but anyway, like I said, you can see the uh, clips. You know, if, if I'm in a well, fairly lighted area, it picks up pretty good. Now, I'll put a couple clips here, here on, the, on the dark road with my dim lights on. You don't see too much. So, you know, that's the difference there. But what I really wanted to tell you was the uh, fact that um, the uh, whole trip up and the whole trip back was two. I made that on two files. Two. Here we are. <laughs> And basically, they were uh, no bigger than the ones I took the other day when we went to Greenwood. Uh, 1.5 gig, I think, is what they ended up being, somewhere around that. But they were 30, over 30 minutes, both of them. So I have discovered, obviously, that uh, the file size is where the looping comes in at, I'm pretty sure. It has nothing to do with the time because, uh, you know... Uh, when you're when you're uh, videoing in the dark like that, there's not very much video information available, and that way it doesn't take up a lot of hard drive space. That's why the uh, the files are smaller, and with the smaller files, you can video longer. So that that made me think that maybe if I put it on WVGA or VGA, I might be able to even uh, do better like that 
and I'm going to try another one there. Now I didn't have any problems getting the uh, files off this time. I used the good cable and in fact I, I actually just I didn't bother using the import feature of Windows 7. I just brought up the uh, hard drive and the uh, Windows Explorer and copied the uh, files over and uh, it worked just fine. So you know I think that problem is that cable and I, I really think that's all that is. So uh, that should be good. I'm, I'm hoping that's good. And I'm, I'm really wanting to, to keep this camera because I, I like the way it records. I like the uh, the footage that you get off of it. I think it's pretty good. Now, the sound's not the best, but, you know, I didn't buy it for sound. And uh, so, you know, that's just the way I feel about that. So, anywho, that's uh, pretty much it. I wasn't even going to make a, a video today, but, uh, like I said, uh, it's been one of those days where you just didn't, or I didn't feel like I had to. I had to take Kylie to work. At, she had to be there at six, so we left about quarter after five, and uh, took her to work and got back back, you know, about uh, quarter after six, something like that. It takes about an hour up there, you know, up and back. So, anyway, did that, and uh, we had uh, ordered a Philly cheesesteak pizza from Papa John's. I still had a uh, money left on my gift card. I thought that'd be good while she was here. And uh, so I had that, and uh, I think that's pretty much oh yeah that's pretty pretty much all we did. So um, I did get the uh, Cavalier cleaned out. No, actually, Kylie did that for me. I backed it in the driveway, and she loaded up the stuff that was in the car and put it in the garage, and uh, cleaned all the inside out and everything like that. So uh, if I can come up with a title, I uh, may go ahead and try to put a for sale sign on it and go that route. Uh, going to call my brother-in-law down in Kentucky first, and he's a he's an experienced scrapper, and he's scrapped out quite a few cars, and so I, I was hoping maybe he'd give me an idea of what I can get for it scrap value, so I'll know what to, you know, I, I don't want to go through all the hassle of switching titles and all that stuff and selling the car if it, if I'm not, it's not going to be worth my while if I can just take down the scrapyard and get as much money for it, it'd be a much easier job. You just drive it down there and, here you go, boys, scrap it. <laughs> so, anywho, I'm going to talk to him a little bit, and uh, so that's about it on that. So I think that's going to cover everything I wanted to cover. I just mainly wanted to uh, clue Bill in on this uh, uh, FM wireless reverb microphone, whatever they call it, but I think that uh, that ad I, I posted before put it flashed up on the screen, I believe that's it. It's exactly like this, and it does does have the reverb. And I think, Bill, that truly, that's just the volume control, the sensitive sensitivity, whatever you want to call it. It's got the V minus, V plus, and I think that just adjusts the volume. It has it has nothing to do with that reverb at all. And uh, like I said, that's that's up there as as high as it's going to go, and you know it's going to be a reverb. So that's that. All right, you guys have a wonderful evening. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you.